Okay. Hello, good day to everyone listening. This is Izzy. And I'm Aaron. Welcome to the Cats and Books podcast. Generically named, generically acclaimed. <laughs> we are here. Aaron, what's your cat update? Uh, let's see. I actually have Akila right here with me. Hi. Aww. She's on my lap. She's trying to see. She's kind of sniffing at my phone like, what? what's going on? What's going on? She's like, oh, yes, here I am also. Don't mind me. Well, Cleo was here uh, sitting on the ground, and now she's not. Goodbye. She's disgusted, <laughs> as usual. She's usually disgusted at most things. She's like, ugh. Can't, just, ugh. Gemini is <laughs> probably taking a nap. He had a lot of catnip today. Aww. Cat. Oh, here's Cleo. She's knocking a brooch off of my oh. tables. She's being real oh. cute. She's looking at the TV and trying to slap it. Oh. Because all this stuff is moving on it. And so she's like trying to hit the Skype. <laughs> oh. Yay, Cleo. Hey, I want it known just for all you listeners out there that Cleo is a very choosy with who she uh, sits with or allows to pet her. She is very <laughs> like, don't touch me. And then she'll lie to you and be like, meow, touch me. And then you do. And then she's like, I can't believe you would do that to me. <laughs> oh, and I wanted to add, uh, if you guys are following our Instagram page, I am, is a, are doing art um, I do not draw, I do not paint or do anything like that. That's more Isa's uh, thing, but I can color. So I bought the Throne of Glass coloring book and I actually finished the first page in that and it's up on our Instagram right now at, at Cats and Books Pod. Um, so if you want to follow us on Instagram, we'll be posting art, coloring book pages. Yeah, Aaron um, got the Throne pictures. of Glass coloring book so you can you know, look at that in action on there in case you were curious about what a what a coloring book of a woman murdering a bunch of people might look like. <laughs> I will say I will give the illustrator props or the, the creator of the coloring book um, because the illustrations are beautiful, like really, really pretty. Um in fact, I'm looking up her name currently, his or her name. Um, so the Throne of Glass coloring book is illustrated. Well, it doesn't say. It just says that it is published by Bloomsbury. Hmm. Interesting that they don't mention who the artist is. It says cover illustration by Yvonne Gilbert, coloring by Ellen Lindner. But that's just the front cover. Kind of the yeah. The show that's cover. like I guess the artist would be the one who did the drawing on the cover, right? I would assume. If you guys know, let us know. I'm incapable of researching myself out of a paper bag. <laughs> Somehow I got a master's degree. Don't ask me how. <laughs> and uh, oh, Cleo's here. Oh. Now on to our book. Air of Fire, the fourth book in the installment of the Throne of Glass series. Mm-hmm. So, Aaron, tell us. Summarize. Let's summarize the previous. Like, how did we get here? Previously mm -hmm. on. Previously. This, this Throne. crap. So, previously, kind of where we end with the last Throne of Glass novel, Crown of Midnight. We get to the end. They had a battle against kind of a demonish creature uh, right because they they like for the third or fourth time in the freaking catacombs <laughs> yes in the catacombs they finally meet uh, something that could kill them somehow only the fourth time in the catacombs did this yeah. like, appear um, and yeah and then they're like oh god they got sucked through a portal everybody almost got eaten selena turned into a fey a fey Yep, and then she's murders. like burning herself out trying to Hulk mode destroy this guy. And then they get out, of course. And then 
Kale uh, is like, you know what? I think I have a plan. We can get you out of here mm. at, uh, somewhere else. Mm-hmm. And I forget what like fake plot they came out. What was that? So, so the big plot that comes out is that Selena, right before she leaves, um, because he sends her to the last known Fey realm and thinks, oh, she'll be safe there. She'll be fine there. Well, she whispers um, in his ear a, a date. And when he starts looking into these dates, he Another starts... Another mystery to solve. We yeah. love a puzzle in this story. <laughs> we do love a puzzle. Um, but he... Fifty real- shades of fucking riddles. <laughs> God, he- just tell me the goddamn answer. Anyway, okay, I'm done ranting. I'm on the now. Okay, continue. So- he, he figures out um, that she is Aelin Galfinius. And Aelin basically is the rightful heir to the throne of Terrasin. And so she had been, like, rumored dead, right? Everyone thought she was dead. Well, she wasn't. She was sitting right under the king's nose the entire time. Lost um, in a river. Right. And, and then that's it, where what's his face found her, and then that's why she got sucked into the assassin pyramid scheme, and then got stuck there, and then uh, yeah, which is all revealed through this book. But anyway, which we already talked about because it already happened. Okay, anyway, let's dig into it. So, yeah. So now this we, book starts. Yes, this book starts. She has been ordered to the Elven stronghold of Windlin, and. She pla- Selena plans to speak with Queen Maeve of the Fae about the word keys, which we found out about in the last book. And right, she- what is it that why does she know that it's Fae stuff again? Like, I know it's probably obvious to other people that it's like, well, you know, she's the family and the word keys and they have mm-hmm. magic. But I'm like, is that is that right? Is that why she- she's like, OK, I need to ask this woman specifically. Mm-hmm. A- and because if the king has even one of the word keys, which we kind of figure out. She does. At least one. Um, That if he gets a hold of all three, um, that he's going to become even more powerful than he already has. Um, Because he's already been responsible for a lot of people's deaths. He's been responsible for magic, you know, being vanquished from the kingdom. Um, which another side note about that, of course, in the last book, we also found out Prince Dorian has magic and has been having to um, hide that fact because if his father found out, that would not be good. Um, but anyway, more about that in a second. Right. Um, well, that happened in the last book that they found out he had magic and they were tr- still trying to keep it a secret. And the only people who know are, wait, Selena. does Kale know? Yeah, he yeah. Kale and Selena. That, those yeah. are the only two people. Because they were that. there when the mm-hmm. whole shebang with the monster happened in the crater. And how mm-hmm. convenient that the, the Dorian just had a dream that was like, you better go help your friend. Because, <laughs> like, well, that- girl, I ain't waking up. Sorry <laughs> about the friend like that. So I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. No. no. <laughs> so. We have Selena in the beginning who begins to travel with a fae man named Rowan. So Rowan is kind of our new um, gentleman. New hot daddy drops. Yes. It's, <laughs> it's elf. Uh, you, you, bad boy elf man Sundare. Like, I'm mean and tough and I'll kill you. And then they spend the whole freaking trip just being like, I'll kill you. No, I'll kill you. It's like freaking. <laughs> well, anyway, while we've got that going on, we we kind of have like two um, stories going on within this book. Um, so you get pieces with Selena and Rowan. And you get pieces with what is happening in the kingdom of Ardalan with um, who she left behind, which is Cal and um, Prince Dorian. And so, not to jump the gun, but we start hearing about the witches in this book. Yes. And so, uh, yeah, forgive me. So actually there's kind of the third 
plot line. So forgive yeah, me. There's like, there's like three yeah. weaving yeah. stories. Mm -hmm. So right now I, I'm going through my notes and my notes are in order of events happening. So I'm not for, so forgive us. This will be kind of a three, three part story. So, um, yeah, we're bouncing. One of the quotes that I have, um, right here. So this is regards to when she gets to the queen, the fake queen. So Selena gets to the fake queen. Right. After and, arguing and fighting and getting beaten up by the other guy. Cause he's like, you got a freaking loud mouth. Keep talking shit. Gonna keep getting hit. And she doesn't shut up. Just kidding. That's a biased opinion. He was also being a huge tool and like, insufferable so i definitely understand why she would want to beat his ass but like it was a mistake so anyway so all that happens then they get to the castle okay or take over sorry about it yeah okay so i have a couple of quotes from this interaction because i thought Ooh, these were kind of important so um this is from the book it wasn't the carved oak furniture or the faded green drapes or the warmth of the fire that made her stop dead it was the dark-haired woman seated behind the desk, Maeve, Queen of the Fae. Okay, wait, 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 Okay, okay, okay. The funniest part about this whole thing, sorry about all the jostling, I'm, like, moving my hair around. No, but the funniest part about this whole thing is that she's talking about how she's like, why is this royal queen fae woman in a freaking garbage-looking office behind a desk? <laughs> Because didn't you catch that in the reading when they were like, it seemed weird that such a, you know, all-powerful queen was sitting behind a desk. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's this, like this really yeah, shitty you know, stuff. that is weird. Why well, is it? Why? Remember, well, because the Fae don't have any power. So I kind of get the feeling, even though the Fae stronghold, I mean, is a nice-ish city, you know, it's, they've basically. But I thought they you, did have powers. No, I'm not saying that. I mean that they're kind of just that the Fae have been kind of jostled together and that they're, you know, they're not wanted in the kingdom. And I kind of get the feeling that they don't have, you know, the best. Is it kind of like the Fae have like, been sequestered by right. the people yeah. in power? I mean and basically, yeah. they're in like a refugee camp. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of how I felt about it. That they're kind okay. of okay. Well, in that case, that yeah, if they're like yeah. all basically in a crisis situation yeah. permanently. Yeah. Ultimately, Maeve tells her that you need to go with Prince Rowan, and he, you know, you and him are going to train together, and. I will tell you everything that I right. know. We find out Rowan is a prince. Because of course he freaking because is. Of course he, yeah. But ultimately. How many princes one, does one bitch need? She's like, I'm a princess. And you're a prince. And you're a prince. And you're a guard. I mean, that's fine. I guess whatever. You're basically a prince. So it's fine. You know. But anyway. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, let me dig into it. Um. So ultimately, Queen Maeve says, you know, I would like for you to take your place as Queen of Terracin, which, of course, I mean, we kind of knew that all along. But we then go to, like we said, there's kind of, there's a lot going on in this book. But then we are introduced to the witches. Um, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. Wait, before we move to the witches, the, the scene that she meets What's-Her-Face ends kind of importantly, which is, say... With with her being like, well, I'll tell you about the word keys, but only if you, like, basically take the throne or whatever. And, like, and, we need to it, be able to prove that you can actually use your magic mm -hmm. or something. Yeah, she says, you know, you need to, you know, go train with Prince Rowan, and then I'll tell you everything that I know about the keys. So it's like, oh, great, she's going to be stuck here for freaking ever. And... She's already mad about it. And then we go to the witches. Yes. And then we are introduced um, to the main witch that we follow, which is Manon Blackbeak. So then Manon is told that 
by her grandmother, who is leader of the clan of witches that she's with. Right. Um, so she is child of leader. Yes. Well, only child grand- syndrome. She's, well, gran- she's only grandchild syndrome. Only grandchild, yeah, of the leader. Um, and her grandmother says, you know, the king of Ardalan has made a deal with them in exchange for wyverns. And wyverns are these, like, winged, hideous, lethal beasts, basically. Dragons. Um, so that's kind of where we... They're not start. really dragons, are they? There's some other no, thing. No, they're wyverns. So what's the difference between a dragon and a wyvern? A wyvern? I looked up, like, pictures of them. They kind of look like dragons, but they're... Are they more snaky? Yeah. They're kind of... They're less yeah. like lizard, more snake. Yeah. I don't know. A, I'll figure it out. Yeah. So a wyvern, according to you, um, they have they have two legs. So wyverns have two legs. Oh, um, not- so it's like two legs and wings only, like bats. Right. right. Oh. So, so that's kind of where we start with the witches. And yeah, we you meet get- her and she's like, ha ha, I was hiding in this abandoned house. And then these dudes are like... Hey, hey, we got a witch. We're going to go set her house on fire. Her, and they go over and she's like, hey, hey, and then she like chews out their jugular. And it's like, and her face was covered in blood. And it was just, she didn't bother wiping it off of her chin as she watched the other man scream in fear. And it's like, you know what? Work it, girl boss. <laughs> so we are introduced to her and the wyverns. That's kind of where we start with the witches. And then we get more scenes of Selena and the Fey warrior um, training her, fighting with her, um, mock fighting with her. She keeps having visions of the deaths of her parents. So Selena keeps having dreams, nightmares about the death of her parents and about Nehemia. But anyway, while all this is going on, we then kind of cut back to the castle where Dorian makes friends with this new healer character named Sorsha. He accidentally uses his power in front of her one night, and she helps him cover it up um, by making it look like she knocked a table over. So he accidentally kind of sets, <laughs> he sets a table, you know, he kind of flips the table, stuff goes flying everywhere, and she kind of covers him. Right, because she's like, oh boy. And yeah. then... She's like, I've always loved you from afar. Pretty much. She has a big crush on him. So she kind of takes... So she, yeah, uh, senpai uh, noticed me syndrome. Yes. He he is kind of taken under her wing because she has ways of kind of um, helping him suppress his magic. Meanwhile, we have this newer character again another new character again what i said about narrowing the cast they were like all right bored with the other ones they're all dead don't worry about it well in this one we have a new kind of champion for the king named edian he is actually um working undercover he's you know he's working (laughs) undercover for the rebels as well which cal finds out and kind of trails him one night, discovers he's working for the rebels, and Edian tries to kind of, or Adi, Adian, sorry, again, guys, these fantasy names, she needs a guy. Uh, yeah, I kind of thought it was Adian. Is it? Okay, anyway, Adian, he tries to kind of kill Cal, but Cal's like, whoa, 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 I, like, kind of like, I'm on your side, Aelin is alive, and anyway, we will get back to them in a moment. Right, because uh, then it cuts and it's like, dun, dun, and then they're like, stay true. Yeah, so then we're going to cut again to um, Rowan and Selena continue to train, and he's trying to show her how to shift into her fae form kind of on command. She finally does. Um, she continues to grieve Nehemia. Yeah, she, she does a terrible job. She and then, does- uh, what's his face? Uh, Rowan makes fun of her and is like, haha, you're a pathetic piece of crap. Yeah, and he's kind of being shitty, um, kind of on purpose. He's trying to get her power to, you know, show its fu- full form. Then um, he's shitty. Yeah, and she tries, yeah. Toxic she boyfriend tries. syndrome. 
Yeah, pretty much. She tries to leave, and she she gets angry with him, and she tries to leave, and she seeks out shelter in a cave. And then some skinwalkers show up. So Rowan, of course, also shows up. So Lena then shifts into her fey form and, of course, allowing her powers to work. Um, she sends flames towards the skinwalkers and kills them. We kind of have that main event. Wait, Our- I have a question here. Sorry to interrupt you, but okay. I have heard that it like people shouldn't use the term skinwalker because it's appropriating. I have heard that too. So, And so I'm wondering if this was yeah. maybe a bad choice. In the book... The term skinwalker is used to depict a creature that has no form. It steals skin off of dead fey folk and wears them to trick others into trusting them, I think. Is that, does that sound right, Erin? Yeah, that sounds about right. That sounds kind of like what they were dealing with monster-wise in that book. <laughs> in the plot, they are introduced to the skinwalkers as a plot device to get Selena to show off her, like, elf powers because it suddenly they're in danger and she's not prepared and she has to, I don't know, find strength within herself to do magic and get them away. And I don't know, Aaron, is there anything important about this scene we need to know? Um, well, it, it does make her, because she's so panicked and scared, it does make her do her full fey powers. So it is kind of an important part of the book because it's kind of the turning point where with her magic and with her being able to use her magic in a more powerful way. The Skinwalkers are a Navajo cultural being, um, and we've been running into issues where uh, random people who don't really know anything about Navajo culture, or even if they do, they will take the term Skinwalkers and include it in their fiction, but incorrectly and so it's like one of the this is one of those times where it doesn't really appear that the author sarah j moss maybe knew of that this was something that was going on with specifically jk rowling she came under fire in 2016 for using she the also, name yeah. and characteristics of a skinwalker trying to honor Navajo culture, according to her. But her version of the skinwalkers was inconsistent with the cultural concept of skinwalkers. Uh, Sarah J. Moss, I'm sure she's a lovely person. I just get the feeling she did not yeah, she really may not understand have been... yeah. that that was not uh, just sort of like a cryptid that was available for grabbing like Mm -hmm. it's not like bigfoot like nobody cares if you take bigfoot and throw him in a story or maybe they do actually maybe they do Uh, i don't know know. maybe they do i don't know email us if they do i'll I'll look it up later as we aaron and i are not navajo it is none of our business to know what skinwalkers are or how they work within the culture like nobody needs to explain that to us it's none of our business (laughs) So then we go back to the witches, and I wanted to cover, um, so we have three witch covens in this book. We have the Blackbeak coven, we have the Yellow Legs coven, and we have the Blue Blood coven. And each of the three are kind of, um, they have their own sort of leader. So Manon, who we, you know, are introduced to, is supposed to be the leader of the Black Beaks. Iskra is supposed to be the leader of the Yellow Legs. She's the clan heir. And then Petra is the Blue Blood clan heir. I have a question. So, yes. Which, okay, so Baba Yellow Legs from the last book was from she the was, Yellow Legs clan, but was she the was she a leader or, like, what? Was she wasn't she? a she wasn't a leader, but she was part of that clan. Oh, okay. So they yeah. basically were like, oh, one of us. Yeah. She, she yeah. did. Well, because I thought she was like, had like a special spot somewhere, but I could be misremembering it since uh, like everyone's a prince in this book. Who freaking knows? Yeah, it's kind of, again, 
like I said, kind of confusing because she has like 20 characters. It's, it's, it, it can be the, I will say these books, if you, if, you know, I have my notes to go off of and that's how I kind of keep track of who is who and, um, why they're important. And honestly, these books, you almost need to take notes while you're reading. But anyway, so we have the Wyverns and these three leaders or clan heirs, they're wanting to stake their claim to the biggest Wyvern, which is named Titus, while they are waiting to kind of fight for the honor of having this Wyvern. Um, Iskra shoves Manon into the pit on purpose where he is. And the bait beast that they have in there is... Right, which I hate. Yes, which I hate. I hate I it. I didn't like it. it I it did not was, like it. But I'm, yeah, I'm very against animal cruelty. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. The bait okay. beast. The bait beast in the pit is saved by Manon, who chops off Titus's tail to save the bait beast. Um, which everybody's probably mad about, because Titus was like the freaking guy. He was the guy. But the bait beast, in turn, kills... Titus and man yeah, the and baby's that- like pulls a fast one and is like honestly die exactly but the bait beast kills Titus and then Manon stakes her claim on the wyvern and she says I want this wyvern this is the wyvern that I want you all you know thought he was the underdog and guess what <laughs> yeah she was like this is a cold-blooded killer yeah so she takes that wyvern for herself and then we go back to the kingdom, and Cal and Edian have been helping each other build the sort of underground movement. They're helping each other with information that they know. Prince and Dorian, Dorian. Yeah, he's so suspicious. Dorian gets he's curious. Like, what the? What is going on? He's <laughs> like, I'm not a freaking idiot. And he follows them one night. And he overhears them talking, and he, that's how he discovers that Selena is Aelin Dalthinius. They are um, so not subtle. Like, like the real. number of times some rando can just, like, sneak up and be like, do 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 ooh, information that's very sensitive. Like, what if that was a freaking other guard or, like... They were in the tomb. I mean, you know. Oh, <laughs> uh, they were... Oh, they were in the freaking past I mean, ways again. Yeah. They thought they were in private, but they were not. Oh. Um, so... Selena continues to train with Adian, and we get this sort of scene that is, I thought, very, I don't want to say, it, I mean, it is heart-wrenching, but it's also, I think, the point in my mind as I'm reading this book, you know, again, we've talked about how before Selena is very much hesitant to take her place as the heir of Terrasen. She's She's not a, a natural sort of leader. So she continues to train with Idian, and he asks her one day, do you really want to be useful? And he shows her this dead woman that he has found horrifically murdered. And he says, you know, all these women keep dying. This is the fourth woman that I have found. And he's like, you can be useful to people. You can be useful um, to your people, to your kingdom. So I think that's kind of, in my mind, as I'm reading it, I don't know if you feel differently, as a, but in my mind, that's where I feel Selena starts to turn and, and think, okay, maybe I do want to lead. Maybe I do want to help my people. Right. He's a very intelligent, like, finally intelligently going about it instead of being like, you're a stupid idiot. You were a dumb, worthless piece of yeah, crap. I feel like- and, uh, yeah, like, I feel like at first, I, I get, I understand why he was being kind of rude and snotty. Um, but I think at heart, he does, he does love Aelin. Um, I don't even mean in a romantic way. I mean, like, you know, he loves her, he respects her. And he just, he's, I think the problem with those two, where the heated arguments come from, she doesn't want to take her place. And he sees the potential that she has. And I think it's really frustrating for him because in his mind, he's thinking, our people are dying. There aren't that many of us left. We're all in this little, you know, stronghold, basically. We've been, you know, to him, I think it's very frustrating because he's like, you have the, you are the rightful heir to this entire kingdom. You're right. Like, you could change this for all of us, but will Mm -hmm. you? Mm -hmm. Like, will you set aside your own desires? 
for right. like the greater good of your people who need you to step up because you're still alive. Right. And yeah, so that's that's cool. Like I appreciate I, that I, yeah, conflict. I like, sort of, I like that sort of character development. I mean, I know that it, you know, I know that the the fighting and the you know the romance that can be kind of yeah, you know, all right, you know. It can be kind of annoying and teenage boppy at times. <laughs> it's know. like, oh boy, more training. Yeah, but at the surface, you know, at the surface, I think if you go if you go deeper into it and you really get into the mind of these characters, then you start to realize, okay, why is Rowan being such a dick? The reason right. being, he's he's watching his people die. He's watching, you know, these women, for example. Right. They- he's like why does this keep happening he's like i'm trying to keep my people alive or people are dying and you're right the- he's like i need you i need to you get your shit together right get good and start mm-hmm. freaking helping us because all because- this time you've been wandering around doing some other crap nobody knew who you were <laughs> you didn't know who you were now right. you're here and uh it's uh it's time you know you gotta step up to the freaking plate <laughs> to follow on what's going on with Dorian and Sorsha. She keeps trying to find ways to suppress and control his magic so that he doesn't, you know, blow up in the middle of his father. Um, and of course, she's they- trying to hide him and find ways. She like takes the fall for him accidentally, his magic blowing up a bunch of crap, and then she gets yelled at about it. But then he's like, "Yeah, no, it's chill though. I still want her as my healer." And then the older healer's like, "All right, that's suspicious." <laughs> That's suspicious. Oh, like, that? okay, Prince. <laughs> but they end up becoming romantically involved. They're actually, and honestly, I really like them together. I really like them together. But side note, then we go back. I, I told you guys this yeah, one. Yeah, I like Sorsha as a character. I do too. I do too. I, I feel like... Like, she did a lot with her, and I, I, it was cool, but I also feel like I want more. Yeah, I you do. Know? Too. I'm like, this is good. We're going in a good place. More. I did want to go back. Um, we are at the witches that Mannion gets her wyvern to fly. So she had been having a really hard time getting this wyvern to fly. She took on this sort of underdog, and then she finally gets him to fly. And when that happens, it was a really... Drama. It was a it was a cool scene. And then we have a big epic battle scene that I loved. Um, Selena, of course, does more training. And one night um, she has been working kind of with the kitchen staff. It's where she kind of hangs out. It's where she feels most comfortable because people don't really bother her there. And that and she's been sort of told to be on kitchen duty by Rowan. Mm hmm. So, so that he can kind of, he can keep an eye on her. <laughs> it's just so funny. Like, the, I'm just still thinking about, because I was listening to this book actually today to try and catch up as much as possible to kind of remember. But, like, there was a part where there's, like, the kid, the, like, teenager who's back there, and then the two, like, older, older gay men who I love are very sweet mans. And yes, they're, they're all half-elf. And the kid says, like, the work sucks, but the company's good. <laughs> and I just think, <laughs> boy, if that ain't the truth most of the time. <laughs> I, know, I love uh, Luca, the kind of kiddo working in the um, kitchens. He's a cute little kid. and He's not um, that little, though. I mean, how old is he supposed he, to be? I think he's, like, he's probably i think 15 16 so he's not like little little but yeah I mean, no, he's a teenager characters. but like a young te- like he, you know he's not like 18 yet he's still just like fucking around mm-hmm. and um one day she kind of snaps off at the kitchen staff and yeah she's just like randomly a jerk to them just because she feels like it and it's she's- like dude you're whatever i know that was not selena's greatest scene this book i was kind of like um excuse me miss man <laughs> well, no, I mean, like, I'm sure she did it on purpose to be like, her trauma is turning her into an asshole. But it's like, look, we already know. We kind of already we know. Yeah. So, no. So Lena Sorry. does okay. more training. Oh, you're fine. Um, She snaps off and Rowan. So Rowan can be, you know, he can be a little twisted. I'm not going to lie. So 
he takes her kitchen friend, Luca, the kid. Oh, uh, yeah, this. Yes, shit. this. this <laughs> epic. Now, let me tell you guys, this was one of my favorite parts in the book, I will say. But at the time when I'm reading this, I'm like, Rowan, what are you doing? What are you doing? Stop. Bruh, why? He can be a little too extreme at times. So Rowan has her try and rescue Luca from being encased in ice. So he he magically encases him in ice. And she he's like, okay, now you're going to rescue him. So she does rescue him. She does rescue him. And that poor and kid's he, like, it's cold out here. Hey, can we hurry up? This kind yeah. of sucks. Yeah, I mean, this poor kid is kind of being used. He's like, really, guys? Really? And Selena's uh-huh. so pissed. She's like, I'm going to literally skin you alive for doing this to him. And he's like, yes. <laughs> better act fast. And she's like, no, this isn't chill. I will literally end your life. But <laughs> wait, it'll have to wait. It'll have to wait because a huge monster comes through and whips up through the ice. Surprise, there was monsters. And then after they kill that monster. Oops, all um, monsters. Yes, all the monsters. Ah, uh, real, our real monsters. (laughs) This is a joke for Grey. Anyway. Well, she goes up to Rowan and she's like, you never bring any of my friends or this kid into training ever again he's like she says this is absolutely not okay it's a horse shit so we kind of end it with that big battle that happens with the ice at the ice where you know where he encases poor luca well yeah because we need to figure out we we didn't talk about what happens at the end of all that well what happens is like all we said was he was encased in ice and the monster shows up and then what does she do again doesn't her shit like not work for some reason, I remember her magic not working. Yeah, they fight the monster, and then she, she tears Rowan a new one. Yeah, but nothing like she, happens because nothing happens. She just yells at people, and then nothing well, happens. Well, it's, it's not that nothing happens. That scene that happens after is the scene where we find out all of Rowan's history, where he's like, you know, I had a wife, basically, and she was pregnant, and I didn't know. And Wait, why is that when we find all that out? Well, because it, it happens, right, well, not 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 like at the water scene, that's not what I mean. I mean the battle scene, that kind of happens like after the battle scene. Like, because he does feel bad that he ropes this kid into the Right, training. and then he's like, like I understand you, know. you have trauma, I too have trauma, well, I, have trauma. I, I too have lost right. my beloved well, because he did, he did feel a little bad because they didn't know that that was going to happen. He was just supposed right. to. Right. He was like, no, party. for real, my bad this time. Like, actually. he's like, I, he's like, no, for no, because he didn't know that was going to happen. He was just like, well, shit, you know, <laughs> shit. Right. Monster. So anyway. Yeah, so um, they have a heart to heart and we close on that sort of. And close on that. And yeah, so we, we're going to do a second part for this. Because this book is long. It's very long. And we may, and I will let, you know, y'all, people who listen to our podcast, um, there may be a few books in this series and another series that we may break up into two. Because I just looked at Queen of Shadows yesterday. I went to a bookstore with some friends and I was telling them about our podcast. Like and I was pointing out. Oh, yeah, sorry. I was, I was, I was pointing out, throwing a glass, and I was like, "Oh, Queen of Shadows, there's the next book," and it's like, <laughs> it's like six hundred. I think it's like six hundred pages. Oh. I mean, it's, <laughs> Queen of Shadows is huge. God. Uh, Tower of Dawn, I, I think, is the is the last book in the series, but Tower of Dawn also looks chunky, <laughs> chunky. So anyway, we're gonna get off here. Um, again, thank you for listening. Yeah, thanks um, for being here. Yeah. Glad you could catch part one. This, <laughs> this is a long book, so we're going to get back together when Aaron's less hungry and do the rest mm-hmm. of this book. Enjoy the cliffhanger of uh, nothing, really, actually. There's no cliffhanger. No. <laughs> it's like, all right, y'all almost died, but it's fine. <laughs> All right, goodbye, everyone. Have a good rest of your day. Make good choices. (laughs) Goodbye. Bye.